Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Scott and Greg. Thank you all for coming. Uh, having trouble seeing you, but <clears throat> uh, I've never written a book like this before, and <clears throat> I want to explain why I wrote it. In addition to being a love story for my mom and dad, and my sisters and brother, uh, I, I wrote it because. If you are looking for active citizens to help you in making a better country or community, after a while, you, you run out of exhortations and you ask yourself, how can we get more active citizens? And sometimes you have a demonstration, you have a march, people come and they connect, or somebody has a tragedy and forms something like uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Or they might come out of the universities, perchance, uh, having some sort of mission, uh, whether in science, engineering, politics, uh, economics, organizing, whatever. But it's never enough. There are never enough active citizens. And if you look at the generation of citizens who are active from the get-go, <clears throat> you go back to the family. You have to recognize in many ways that the family has become a political football. Extreme right-wing people uh, like to uh, espouse family values. Uh, we've seen how that's played out. And the family is under great pressure. It's the primordial unit of any society, any culture in the history of the world. And it is under tremendous pressure because of economic pressure, the separation hour after hour from the parents and the children, long commutes. It's under commercial pressure. We're in the first generation of systematic, direct commercial marketing to little children, bypassing their parents and undermining parental authority, and getting these children to systematically nag their parents and to be exposed to pretty rotten things like violent programming, violent toys, and uh, junk food, over-medication. The third type of pressure is a low expectation by the society at large, which gives a lot, lot of lip service to children, you know, children first. But our children are terribly mistreated in our society, and not just child abuse, and not just what juvenile detention centers uh, are, are like. They're mistreated and they're not even given universal health coverage. They're not given adequate and quality daycare. Um, there's not enough arm around the shoulder. They are exposed to fast food companies that sell them uh, products and lure them into their stores that are going to give them serious illnesses, often while their children, diabetes, later high blood pressure. And they're exposed to the most violent personal uh, programming in the history of the world. Now they're exposed to an opportunity to be interactive and engage in tearing limbs to shreds through these activities of what I call these corporate electronic child molesters. And, and so it's time to be very self-conscious about families. It's time to tap into the traditions when the family was more intact and more together, the extended family, and to derive from each family's background the best insights, wisdom, and experience, and retain it, and record it, and jot it down, and pass it on to the next generation. It's not just that children have never meant to have to reinvent the wheel. It's that they may have difficulty reinventing any wheel. If they spend their childhood 50 hours a week watching screens, computer screens, television screens, video game screens, estranged from nature and their natural surroundings, 
not having an opportunity to socialize themselves with other human beings, including members of their family, shortening their vocabulary and their uh, attention span. So I'm trying to give a context to this very personal book because I'd like to see a broadening tradition of putting down family traditions, family by family. The quality of the world is traced to the quality of parental upbringing. There have been enough studies showing that the battered child grows up to be the battering parent. There's enough studies to show where dictators come from. And while there are many other environmental and social factors that shape people's character and personality, it's quite clear that the parental environment is probably the most important. Heraclides, the ancient philosopher, once said, character is destiny. And I would add, personality is decisive. And the development of character and personality comes first and foremost, as Montessori and others have showed us, from the early years in their parental experiences and upbringing. <clears throat> when I ask active citizens, as I always like to, how did you become active? Sometimes tragedies, uh, sometimes alienation against their parents, if their parents are corporate executives, for example. <laughs> sometimes they have a labor union tradition. But more often than not, here are the answers. Why are you active? When I meet these confident, steady, refreshing figures, I like to ask them how they became the people they are, how they developed such drive, such motivation and purpose. Quite often they hesitate, then they smile and respond. Well, when I was young, my parents, my mother, my father, my teacher, my neighbor told me took me, showed me, inspired me. For democracy cannot flourish without putting an arm around the shoulders of the young. That's one of the reasons I wrote this little book. And in so doing, uh, I had to answer that question to reporters and to Senator Bobby Kennedy at the celebrated hearings on GM's detective uh, caper at the U.S. Senate in 1966 when he leaned forward and he said, why are you doing this? This meaning, why have you spent time trying to get cars that are crash worthy and uh, save lives? I said to him, you know, if I was engaged in an effort to prevent cruelty to animals, I wouldn't be asked that question. But because I was engaged in trying to prevent cruelty to humans, I'm constantly asked that question. 